Now let's look at what everyone loves the most in this channel, which is displacement. We go all the way down here. Now we're going to talk about the puddle layer in a second. All right, let's take a look at how our displacement is going to react when I increase this value. So let's change this to five and you're going to see that this pulls up a little bit. Um, let's let's do 20. There you go. So we have some nice displacement and some difference between our rocky layers. We could actually change the tiling of this. So I'm just going to go over here and on the tiling, let's change that to four. So the displacement's a little bit more apparent, but you can see these rocks are actually protruding out from the grass. And that's how our displacement would react. So if we go down here, uh, we have a, let's say, let's do 25. So it's a lot more noticeable. And if we play with the displacement max layer, let's do 10. You see that that goes through the roof. So actually, let's just change that to around two and maybe we can change that to around 20. So you need to change these two parameters in conjunction in order to get the kind of displacement that you want to get. So you can see that I have my nice displacement over here. And one of the things that I use whenever I try to get some displacement on my material is I will go to bridge and I will take a look at how the previous figure looks and then I would uh, make the displacement accordingly to what I saw on bridge. And this is what I'm talking about. So if you go here into bridge and go into the 3D preview, you're going to see that this will show you how your displacement should look. So if you're playing with displacement, I would completely use this as a guide as to how your material should look. So let's try to mimic that. With this, this is actually a little bit too much. So I'm going to dial this down to around, let's say, I'm, I'm going to call it eight. And that's the normal amount of displacement. Of course, this is a blend, but that's the kind of displacement that we saw here in Bridge. So we're trying to emulate that. All right, so if we come to our second kind of layer that we have here, what I'm going to do is I actually changed the blend controls a little bit so you guys can see what was going on with these layers. So I'm actually going to go into my middle layer and I'm going to tile it to four also. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with the displacement here as well. And we're going to try to use the same displacement that we used for the previous one. So we have base layer displacement of eight and two. Now let's do a base uh, middle layer displacement amount of eight. And you're going to see that bumped up a little bit and it's looking pretty nice. So as you can see, this actually looks like it's blending really nicely. So like these rocks are coming out of this dirt. So let me actually change the tiling of the top coat be the top layer let's change that to four as well and usually i don't like to displace grass because it doesn't look right actually if we go down here and we do the top displacement amount and we increase that to say let's eight um there is a little bit of displacement it it just seems like it lift the mesh but it doesn't seem like it did a lot let's do something exaggerated like 30 and it's just trying to take over what the rocks have so like i said i usually don't try don't like to do displacement on grass but you can do it that if you wanted to so when it comes to displacement offset fade and tessellation multiplier tessellation multiplier it's what it says is how much tessellation do you want to have in your displacement? I found that a multiplier of 16 does it well. This is the default value. A distance fade, and this is going to change how much of the tessellation is going to change as you go further away. And I like to change this to a thousand. This is pretty much what you had in the previous kind of blend 
because that will give me a sufficient amount of space between the camera and the terrain for the tessellation to go away as long as you're pushing back. All right, now let's play with the puddle. We go down here. I'm actually going to activate all these layers. And I'm going to be painting on the blue channel. So we're in the blue channel. Let's paint over here. And as you can see, we have this little puddle right here. It's a nice blue puddle. If we go over here, we can change the color of this puddle and make it kind of like muddy. And you can have whatever kind of color you want for this. So I'm going to say OK. So we have the height map. This is actually not going to do much because we don't have much of a height difference over here. Uh, the liquid opacity means how uh, how turbid your liquid is. So how many particles are floating in your liquids? This doesn't actually create particles. Just make it makes it look more like mud. So right now we have like a very clean puddle. But if we dial this up, it'll be kind of like a muddy, dirty puddle and up to a point where it doesn't look realistic anymore. And over here, the for now, it's kind of like for now effect if you know what it is it's kind of like that shininess around the around one object that every single object on earth has so if i dial this up you're going to see that shininess will go more towards the exterior and you'll see more uh a this a little bit clearer which it makes it look a lot uh less realistic in this case but if we go into the other way it's going to start looking um, kind of like if we turn the opacity up. So the liquid roughness, very self-explanatory. Um, liquid's usually very shiny. If we turn this up, it's not going to be shiny anymore. So I'm going to leave it at its default state. And the falloff roughness is how soft that uh, variation of the roughness is going to be. So we have other values here, like the albedo darkening color. So this is kind of like how the bottom should look. And we have a range and a fall off to control over here. But let's go to something very fun that we didn't have before in the puddle layer, which is the waves. So right now we have to activate the liquid wave normal. So this is going to be kind of like a normal map that's going to create those waves that are going to be on our puddle. And we have some wave control. So if you want waves or ripples across your puddle, you can now do that, which I think it's really fun in case you're trying to simulate rain or something like that. So let's increase the speed. And you can see how that's really pushing it. Look at how that behaves. So I'm actually going to leave it at the default and the default's barely moving. So I guess 0 0.01 would do. And you could see some slow movement right there. Now we have the strength of that, how much you want those waves to be moving around. So now you can actually see what's going on. And we also have this useless parameters, which actually does nothing. All right, that was the blending. Now I'm going to show you another thing that's really cool. And that is that you can blend acid materials. So this doesn't only happen for the surface materials, but we can do it for the acid materials. And I'm just going to show you how that's done. We're going to click here and look for this material. I'm actually going to duplicate it so I don't ruin the base one. I'm going to throw this into the surfaces so I can have it over here and I'm going to make this my base and I'm going to mix this with some dirt. So I'm going to select this one also. So control click here, control click here. Now I have my tool and I'm going to call it rock formation blend. I'm going to create this blend going to go into my folder, you're going to see that it actually reset it to its initial form. So this is how these rocks came in here. So if you did any changes to this, you might have to do it after you do the blend, but it's no big deal. It's actually very easy to do. So let's just throw it in here 
and you're going to see our rock change back to what it was before. But that doesn't matter because we can double click and we can change all the parameters like we used to. So I'm going to turn these two on. It's going to compile a little bit. And after that, we can come into our controller. So we have our base layer controllers over here in the albedo. I'm not going to touch the tiling because remember this object has very particular UVs. So I'm just going to turn these on and I'm going to do what we have before, which was the contrast round two. This one is 1.2. Actually, we may have to increase the contrast of this a little bit more. So we're going to do 2.5. There you go. That's kind of what we had before. So as you can see, this is looking nice and dandy like we had it before. And we also want to start painting on this. So I'm just going to close this here. I'm going to go to modes. I'm going to go into mesh paint, select paint, and I'm going to make sure that I have the red. So that's my middle layer. Switch out my colors. And there you have it. So I'm painting my acid with the other material. And the best thing is when you're painting with the material, it's actually doing a kind of like a triplanar projection of the texture. So you're seeing no texture stretching. Uh, that being said, I think I'm going to go into my material and I'm going to tile the middle material. So it looks actually a lot closer to what we have on this rock. So I'm just going to turn this on. Let's tile two, three, see how that looks. That looks a lot better. And it looks like there's dirt that actually belongs here. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to erase a little bit of this. You can also use the bracket buttons on your keyboard to change the size of your brush. So I'm just going to erase a little bit of that. And let's actually do it more towards the top. And again, if we wanted to, we could change the albedo controls over here. So let's see if we can match kind of like this color of the rocks that we already have here. So I'm just going to, let's say, change the contrast around a little bit. Kind of like around here. And there you go. I think that creates a better color that makes this more with this kind of rock that we have over here. All right, so let's look at our blend controls. So I'm just going to look at this. We don't have a top layer and this one, so we're just going to play with these. So let's see what this ha what happens here. I haven't tried this one before. Let's try it on camera. So if we go this way, we can see that it's actually doing a nice base blend. If we actually go this way. I actually really like how this looks. So if we have a lot of this. It will look as if this rock just came out of this ground. And this blend amount is actually doing something very, very nice. And we can change. Let's see. Let's go over here. Change the blend contrast. So if we want it more of that and all of these will work in conjunction. So when you move one, you'll probably have to move the others too. Let's do the fall off. And again, this is kind of harsh. If we bring the fall off lower, the lower you bring it, the softer it's going to go. So let's just do a fall off of 0 0.8 and I'm going to leave it at that. All right, I know what you're wondering at this point. Can we add a puddle layer to a 3D asset? And the answer is yes, we can. So you can actually paint puddles into your 3D asset and you can change them around. Of course, there's places where it's actually going to look a little bit uh, like out of place, like over here. I think the water will be dripping out. I don't think it will stay in a puddle on this side, but over here on top, there may be places where you can have a puddle. 
So we can paint maybe like a little puddle around here on top of this rock. And we have a little bit of water on our 3D asset. All right, everyone, those have been all the changes that we have in the new Quixel update. Hope you've enjoyed that. Please leave me a like, leave me a comment. Did you get any of the errors that I talked about in the beginning? Have you had any problems using this? Um, leave me your questions and what do you want to see on the next tutorial? Make sure you share this video out. Subscribe if you haven't.